Welcome to another episode of Welcome Home. I'm your host, Kyle Mandipat, and I thank you for watching this amazing program. In this episode, we're going to talk shop with our utilities agency from the GPWA offices in Fadian. Then, before we close out the show, we'll take you on a tour of some small, or as I like to call them, comfy spaces available for purchase in the house tour. Some of them are actually priced lower than what some of us pay on rent. So, stay right there, get comfy, and get ready, because Welcome Home starts after this. Hop it, everybody, and welcome back to Welcome Home. I'm Kyle Mandipat. Now, you know, a big part of bills, especially when you get yourself your own home, is your water bill. You want to make sure it's paid on time, and you really want to make sure it's as low as it can possibly be. In just a bit, we're going to be talking with someone who's going to tell us a little bit more about water conservation. And trust me when I tell you, she knows her stuff. Let's check it out. Hop it, Gloria. Thank you so much for having me. What a beautiful home you have. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for having me today. Awesome. Awesome. Now, it's great for you to have the opportunity to talk with us today. Of course, you've got so many different things going on, but let's start at the beginning before we jump into all the what's going on now, all right? Let's start at the beginning with Grandma. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but not only are you a beauty queen, not only are you a huge conservation artist is what I'm calling you, but you come from a huge line of people who have been trying to make life better for us here on Guam for a long time. Where does it all start? In all honesty, I really think it starts with my Grandma Gloria Nelson. Yeah. Yeah, she raised all of us. And my grandpa too. She raised him. She raised watching, girl. I don't have to tell him. <laughs> but yeah, she definitely raised us to serve others instead of always putting others before ourselves. And she really did raise us the right way. Humbly, respectfully, to respect everyone. Mm. And to respect the resources, yes, I assume, respect too. Our, respect our land. Growing up to plant, growing up to do all these different things. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Most definitely, and that her spirit of, of helping definitely uh, ventured out into the community as well. It wasn't just with your family. I'm very proud to say I've come into contact with her many times. One of the nicest ladies I know. True story. You look a lot like her. Thank you. Except you're not a painting right now. All right, that's what we're <laughs> comparing you to. But definitely, again, strong history uh, of uh, conservation and great contributions, especially here when we talk about water and power. For crying out loud, your grandma's got a building named after her. <laughs> Does it get any better than that? Yes, now I'm assuming it. that that comes in some way and plays a part in what you're doing now. All right, you're with the Miss Guam uh, Earth, Miss Earth Guam. You've done a great job with that. You're getting ready to compete in, uh, internationally, right? But one of the big steps on your road to that, you've taken it upon yourself to step it up and uh, continue your grandma's mission and talk about water conservation. Why? Conservation is very important to me because growing up around the jungle, growing up around our culture. Our culture is basically, you know, everything, our resources, our land, everything we have around us. And growing around, up around it makes me want to help protect it and help preserve it, you know, for the future. Definitely. Especially with climate change and everything that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. We want our future generations to be able to see what we see. There you go, great answer. Spoken like a true beauty queen. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about conservation, like you said, yes. very important, and you're taking steps. You've tag teamed it here uh, with Guam Waterworks, and, and you're trying to bring the big information out. I know a lot of new homeowners out there get a little bit nervous about the initial payment that they're going to be making on their water bills. A lot of them never, you know, maybe never had a water bill before, and they're taking steps to try to uh, mitigate the, the levels of water that they're using, trying to conserve water throughout the house. I gotta ask, you're an expert, you've been uh, preaching this for a minute here. Tell me a little bit about some ways you think that we can conserve water. Well, I've been preaching it for a minute, yeah. so. <laughs> <Girl>. <laughs> but with the water conservation that GWA is doing right now, the, the main thing is small things make a big difference. I see. So right here I have a card with like five little tips that you can do okay. to make a big difference. And you can familiarize yourself with your shutoff valve because if you don't, if you don't use your shutoff valve and you have a leak, for instance, 
your leak can really cost you a lot on your, oh, on your water bill. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that. And then you can also put like, we have our water conservation for a new homeowner, homeowner kit. Okay. And it has different things I'll show you later. Okay. And it, what's one thing included is the, to show if you have a leak in your toilet, so you can put it in the back. And then we also have replacing your old shower heads. See, that's something See? not everybody knows to do. These I learned that one quick. That one's yes. in their bag. Yes, this will okay. be in the bag. I learned the shower head thing really quick because a lot of people just assume, oh, it's just dripping little drops, little drops, little drops. But as the month goes on, it really adds up. Yes, it will. Okay, so, so you're you... wasting a lot of water mm -hmm. and a lot of money. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're talking about that. Yes. All of that stuff, you have stuff in the bag to uh, yes. combat, right? Yes. Okay. What other tips do you have? We have don't let the water run when you're brushing your teeth. Another one, simple, everyone says it. When you're showering, shampoo your hair, turn off the water. Mm. And then when you're, for instance, you're washing dishes and things, okay. don't let the water run. Instead, fill up the two, if you have like a double sink, okay. fill up one for washing, one for rinsing, and just go from there. Just like the little things. Very it's common sense. Common sense common now, sense. most especially. And yes. like we said, as you get uh, new homeowners in there, I don't care who you are, you definitely want to save money on your water. And these tips will help us do just that. Yes. Now, you've talked about this uh, water conservation kit for new homeowners. I'm sorry, water conservation kit for new yes. homeowners. Go ahead, take a look inside. What do you okay. got there? So, in this water conservation kit, mm -hmm. here, has a cute use water wipe. I like that. I want that as a tattoo on the upper part of my lower back. <laughs> Is that a thing? Okay, what do okay, we got Okay, so I was mentioning sinks. Uh-huh. You have a sponge. Okay. It says save our hanum. Mm, I like that, very cultural. And then I was talking about the water tablets. You put mm -hmm. these in the back of your toilet bowl, and then you put it in, and if you see it leak down into your toilet bowl, that means you do have a leak, so you should fix that. That means that the water continues to drip even if nobody's flushing. Yes, no one's flushing. Mm. And that will affect your water. Okay. Then we also have the leak-proof shower heads. And this will really help in your shower. Definitely. Definitely for conservation. And then included is your tips. Very cool. I love it. And we can also see, I see on there, uh, we've got uh, social media involved there. You can yes, take a look definitely. at the Instagram pages for info on that. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. How progressive. Guam Waterworks Authority. Very cool. So we've got all this information available to us. Uh, I've got to ask you a personal question now. As far as water conservation is concerned, on a scale of 1 to 10, how important do you think it is? Definitely a 10. Yeah? But we live on Guam, girl. It's raining right now. Well, even though it's raining, we just passed a tropical storm, right? Mm. But we still are in a drought. Mm. And Guam only does have one aquifer, and that aquifer is giving water to our whole island, other wow. than down south, which is the groundwater. Mm -hmm. So we should really conserve our water because the aquifer is shooting up water, and it's really fast charging, but eventually, you know. Without conservation, yes. we might run into some trouble there. Yes, we will. And Definitely. I think your big message here is for future generations, right? Yes, future generations, and also with the pollution. Mm -hmm. For instance, like the oil, the fertilizer mm -hmm. going in down to the ground, Yeah. that can also affect the aquifer. And if the aquifer is polluted, if there are things in the aquifer that cannot be filtered out, that can really affect our water, and then we won't really have any water to drink, water to shower with, it has water to be filtered in like different ways. Beef. Yes, corn beef, fried rice, mm. <laughs> Awesome, thank you so much for taking time to hang out thank with me today. Me. A lot of great information, a lot of great information, and most especially, I'm inspired, you know what I mean? Water conservation, again, not only big to make sure our resources last us through to the future, but also to make sure that as new homeowners, our pockets stay as full as they possibly can be. Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank your grandma too for passing this kind of uh, passion down to you. And you now will carry this on for our children. And the children's children. And the children's children. Very cool. Yes. So, so I've got one of them bags there. I have one bag for you. Oh, thank you so much. So and you can use that at your new home? I will. I will. You know, I have a cousin in the car. Um, yeah, I'll, <laughs> there you go. This is Guam Girl. Guam you know style, how this Guam works. style. Yes. Perfect. All right. Sorry, I only have two. No, don't worry. I'll bring my like whole family other, back. Three other cousins in there. One at a time. <laughs> We're coming back for you. But most definitely, thank you so thank much you. again thank you for, for taking time. And thanks for doing what you do. Thank you, Miss Earth Guam, Gloria Nelson. When we return for this quick break, we're going to sit with Jamie Panaula from the Guam Power Authority, and she's going to share with us what net metering customers need to do to hook up to the Guam Power System and receive credits.
Hoff it, everybody. I'm Kyle Mandipat, and welcome back to Welcome Home. Now, I've been hearing this term tossed around lately, net metering. I don't know what it is, but you know what? I'm pretty sure somebody inside here does. We are coming to you from GPA and GWA offices in Padian. Let's find someone who's got some answers. Hoff it, Jamie. Thank you so much for having me, brother man. Hey, Kyle. Glad to have you. Now, you know what? I'm going to say right now, if anybody knows the answers to my questions, it's you. You're the customer service supervisor here at GPA, and I've got a couple questions about net metering. Uh, yeah, I try my best to help you with that. Let's do it. My first question has got to be, what exactly is net metering? Well, net metering is a program which allows uh, renewable energy, mm -hmm. uh, for example, in this case, solar, okay. uh, to produce energy, uh, excess energy, and allow that excess energy to be dispersed or transferred back into GPA's power grid. So what you're saying is, if I got solar panels or wind turbines, or if I got a river in the back that I'm harnessing the power from, if we generate more energy than we're using, we can feed it back into GPA and uh, help that out or, or alleviate some of our bills? That is exactly what it is. Now, there, there is a difference between, and it's important to know this now, mm -hmm. there's a difference between production and consumption. Okay. So whatever you produce minus whatever you had consumed, that is where the net comes into play. So whatever, uh... whatever that net excess is, that actually gets thrown back in or utilized and transferred back into the grid. I like that's like net versus gross. We're talking like taxes <laughs> yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. Awesome. So we have this extra energy, excess energy, if you will. We throw it back in. Um, and I know that you guys have like kind of a compensation situation going on there, right? Well, what, what happens is is uh, within a 30-day period, okay. customers have the, uh, the ability to produce their credits. Mm -hmm. So as, as the days go on, uh, sometimes uh, systems overproduce in, in a 24-hour in a, in a period. Okay. So, for example, uh, at the end of the month, if you had overproduced, say, 50 kilowatts of mm -hmm. power, whatever that 50 kilowatts is, you're entitled to either roll over or, or get or entitled to a payout. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so, this is pretty awesome. Um, now, let's also remember that, the, that this is the, the, the payout and the rollover actually is a, it consists within a, a one-year span. I see. So, so things it. could happen amongst the years. You know, on Guam, we have actually two seasons. We have a wet and a dry season. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we all know that as a solar customer, solar is beneficial when there's sunshine. That's true. But if there's no sun, and let's say you've had uh, 50 kilowatts of credit in the past mm -hmm. two months, and there's no sun for the next two weeks, and it's been raining and constantly, for example, this past summer. It'll level out. It's gonna, you're going to exhaust, and you're going to start tapping into that credit mm -hmm. until eventually there's none. Now when the sun comes, about, comes up, then it just happens all over again. There you yeah. go. So see that? I didn't know anything about net metering. I see now where it's leading. I see how we can work together here on this. My next question is, uh, what's needed? If you want to be a net metering customer, uh, what do I got to do with GPA? Okay, well, it all starts with the application process. Okay. We call it the e interconnection agreement. So basically, a customer would uh, visit any one of our GPA customer service offices, pick up an application, uh, bring that back to their to their vendor or person who, who, who they purchased it from, mm -hmm. have them fill out the specifications, the PV specifications, which is photovoltaic. Mm -hmm. Once all the information is all filled out, they would visit our office, submit the application, and then from there, what happens is our engineer, uh, a work order will get created. Okay. That work order will get forwarded to our engineering department and someone from our engineering department will actually visit the home and perform an inspection. Wow. Uh, when the inspection has been approved, the customer's meter will need to be reprogrammed. Mm. It is not until the net metering application is approved and reprogrammed is when the customer will actually begin to benefit from their production. So that's when we start counting. That is correct. Now, it's important to know this, and some customers actually uh, commission their systems mm -hmm. ahead of the, the approval process. It's important to know this, that if your system is not approved mm -hmm. by the authority, you will not benefit from any credit. I see. So yeah. that's a big thing. you got to make sure thing. you follow the line and make sure everything's correct. checked marked correct. and all the T's is I'd and dotted. Correct, correct. Perfect. Very important. Yes. Okay, so we get through that. We come over here. We coordinate with GPA, like you mentioned. How about contractors? What do we have to do to get ready for that alongside them? Well, the contractors are, are they, they, they really don't need to do anything as far as, I mean, all the contracting part actually happens on their side as far as permitting and all that mm -hmm. stuff, and, and we're not here to police that. Uh, as long as the information on the uh, interconnection agreement is completed out by the by the contractors and the PV specifications are complete, then that's what our engineering department actually utilizes to to verify whether this system follows uh, electrical code and whatever mm -hmm. else, the, uh, whatever uh, other requirements that, that is needed to approve this system. Perfect. So we go through GPA, we finish our uh, interconnection agreement, Correct. take care of business that way, everything's squared away with the contractors, we get to it. Now, 
as far as anomalies are concerned, what, what have you heard or, or what situations have you seen arise that we should be looking out for? Okay, so Kyle, I mentioned earlier uh, about production and consumption. Mm -hmm. um, again, like I, I'm going to have to say this because it's based on my experience. I've been doing this for, for a while and, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the problem here is education. Okay. And I won't, call, I won't call it, let's not call it a problem or an issue. Mm -hmm. It's customers just need to be educated on the differences between consumption and production. Another thing is how to read your meter, how to monitor your, your interval data and your, and your usage most See? especially. Uh, you talked about anomalies. Uh, let, me, let me give you one example. For example, um, when we're talking about an average consumption, most solar systems are mm. built based on an average consumption. Yeah. Um, my suggestion is if you plan on becoming a solar customer or investing in PV, mm -hmm. I would suggest you build your system based on a high average as opposed to a lower average. Mm, I see. Uh, there are some days, like I mentioned, that uh, could be a rainy day, and then there's some days that could be really hot days. So on the really hot days, that's where you start producing a lot of that excess mm -hmm. consumption or, or consumption, in, I mean, production, period. Mm -hmm. But then again, there are some days where you don't produce, oh, yeah. if not any. So it's important to kind of build your system a little, little larger mm -hmm. than what your average is. That way you have that sponge in between. I see, the bumper room. That bumper room, exactly. You know, it, you have that room to either do one of two things. You can either either uh, produce a little more for the, for the rainy days or you can actually have a little bit more for change of lifestyle. I see. Now, human nature and what I've experienced uh, with a lot of our customers is the minute they put solar on the roof, mm. the, the first thing they start thinking about is, hey, let's turn it all on. <laughs> That's, true. That's not how it really happens. Blast you know? the air con, do exactly, everything. Exactly, exactly. So if a system is built based on 1,500 kilowatts, mm -hmm. which is basically your average, then you really don't have any room for excess cushion I or see. bumper, as you call it. Okay. You know, you want to build it just a little bit larger. Just to make sure you have right. that, like you said, you know, solar is there not only to save money, mm -hmm. but it's also there to, to live a little bit more comfortable. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to stay status quo, right? You want to have that little extra. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Definitely. So we get to that, exactly. and, and again, those situations will arise or can arise. Uh, if we had any more questions about the whole net metering program, maybe ways that we can get, maybe some things that just pop up on the brain, how can we get a hold of you, or, or where would we go for more info on this? <clears throat> Our customer service uh, representatives are, are always available. Um, I have, uh, you, you, can, you can utilize our website and contact us on the customer first mm -hmm. uh, email. Um, our numbers are, are always available, 647-5787. Uh, give us a call if you have any inquiries on solar. I'd be glad to help. There you go, you see that? When I first heard about net metering, I thought we are talking about Banyaha. Yeah. the case today. Big things happening for us here yes, at GPA. Yes. And we thank you so much, Damien, for your time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for yeah. answering all the questions. Yeah. And I'll you. check you out later on. All right. Thank you very much for that, Jamie. Who would have thought that the Guam Power Authority gives credit to those who take advantage and invest in our natural power supply, the sun. Up next, we'll tour some small, comfy places that you can kick your feet up in and call home for a steal of a deal. Right here on Welcome Home. Welcome back to Welcome Home. We'll now take you on a tour of just a handful of comfy spaces on the market today. These days, the trend in housing is the smaller, the better. Some even prefer to have homes under 500 square footage. With that said, this is our tribute to the uprising trend of small, comfy homes. Join me and realtor at REMAX Realty Group, Robert Polino, for this episode's Comfy Home Tour. Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to Welcome Home. I'm Kyle Mandipad, and with me, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Mr. Robert Polino. Great to have you, Rob. We're going to be taking a look at several houses today, several spaces that will fit a family and maybe in some cases fit all my stuff. Let's talk about where you brought us to first. All right, uh, Kyle. Uh, well, we brought you here to the beautiful Pia Marine condo, mm -hmm. uh, unit 602. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath, uh, newly renovated uh, uh, bathroom. And it's about 864 square feet of living space, so it's plenty, oh. of, plenty of space and uh, places to, to put all your stuff. There you go. Whenever you say renovated, I'm automatically like, ooh, I want to see. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. First, we start off in Upper Tumon. House number one is at the Pia Marine and is centrally located off Marine Corps Drive. You're greeted by a great open floor plan and beautiful tile work leading into the living room. But immediately to your left is the kitchen, which doubles as the unit's laundry area. Appliances are all included and feature an overhead microwave, a stove, and of course, a refrigerator. Immediately across from the kitchen is bedroom number one, 
of this two-bedroom unit that boasts a beautiful view of Tumon Bay while featuring a countertop that can also double as either an entertainment center and dresser top. Check out this bathroom. It has a sliding entrance to a Jack and Jill restroom featuring a tub which is lockable from both sides. Then back into the common area is a full guest restroom, keeping your visitors away from your private bathroom. The master bedroom is directly off to the living room and features the same beautiful view of Tumon Bay. Outside of this unit that comes with a common area fee included is an outdoor area to hang out along with 24-hour security, a workout room, mailbox and mail services, a restaurant, and a coffee shop too. And did I mention it has a pool? Let me break down your monthly mortgage costs for you. The unit costs $245,000 at 3.5% interest rate for 30 years. Your monthly payment could be a little over $1,100 a month, not including the common area fee. Let's move on to house number two right behind the DFS in Timoning. All right, everybody, we're continuing our search for comfy spaces, and we find ourselves in the comfy hills of Tumon. Rob, where are we, brother man? All right, Kyle, we are here at Villa Di Papa Ladera, okay. a condo right in the heart of Tumon, known for its accessibility to the beach, uh, entertainment, shopping, and restaurants. So uh, we're here at Unit 206. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, it features a three-bedroom, two-bath, 1,064 uh, square feet, uh, and it's priced at $140,000. And uh, it features a uh, newly renovated master bathroom that uh, includes a, a jacuzzi. So let's take a look. <laughs> jacuzzi and papaya, let's go. <laughs> it's go top here. As you enter the unit at the Villa Gipapa Ladera Condo, you'll be greeted by not only an open floor concept, but the great tiling work and kitchen with beautiful updated cabinetry and granite tile top. Check out the futuristic stove top. How about that overhead microwave? And a stove down below with a movable island. Off of the kitchen is an extra living area. Right off that is a bathroom with a space for your washer and your dryer. And it comes equipped with a tankless water heater. Then from the bathroom, you find yourself into bedroom number one. Walking out from that bedroom, you'll find yourself in the living area again, then through the living area with built-in shelves, then the master bedroom, which boasts its own private, newly renovated bathroom that comes equipped with a stand-up shower and, get this, a jacuzzi. This unit at Villa Papa Ladera also features a pool. Let's break down the cost of your monthly mortgage payment. This unit is on the market for $140,000, and given you get a 3.5 interest rate for a 30-year loan, this will cost you about $630 per month, not including the common area fees. Let's now move on to house number three, just down the street from this one. All right, we're just down the street from the last location we hit up, and we're here now on the third floor of another condo unit. Tell us a little bit about where you brought us to this time, Rob. All right, Kyle, we are here at Tumon View, uh, condo phase two okay. and we're here like you said on the third floor uh, at a newly renovated uh, two bedroom single bath about 734 square foot mm -hmm. very affordable living in the heart of Tuban again the distance to beaches oh, yes. restaurants and shopping is is remarkable you can smell it the breeze it's really breezy up here you can smell all the food absolutely all the tourist money it just <laughs> smells so delicious to me absolutely all right so let's, let's take, take a look, look inside all right. see that I beat him to it off of Rivera Lane in Tumon are the Tumon View condos. This third floor unit for sale here has a total of 734 square feet. When walking into the unit, immediately to your right, you'll be in the kitchen, which is open to the dining and the living area. There's tons of storage space just off the entryway as well. Through the common area, off to your right is a small hall area to bedroom number one and two, as well as recently renovated bathroom. This unit as well comes with a swimming pool shared amongst tenants and their special guests. This home is perfect for those really wanting this small, comfy space. The unit is up for grab for $118,000. If you're able to qualify for a 3.5 interest rate for 30 years, your monthly mortgage payment can be, get this, as low as $530. For that monthly payment on a condo in Tumon, this price is a steal. As some renting in the same area pay as much as $2,400 a month on the same square footage, this monthly price does not include the common area fee. All right, Rob, you have brought us all around the island. And of course, on this episode of Welcome Home, we're looking at comfy, cozy living spaces for families, maybe first time homeowners. And uh, we found another one right here in beautiful Timone. Yes, uh, Kyle, we are here at Sunset uh, Condominiums. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, again, convenient location around shopping, restaurants, great medical facilities nearby. Mm -hmm. And we are here at a two bedroom, single unit at 73,000. 
uh, dollars on the market and uh, it's a two bedroom, one bath, newly renovated. So let's take a look. Definitely, I'm gonna say right now, from where we're standing, you see the restaurants, you see the shopping areas. I think for a lot of these smaller spaces that we're looking at today, like we mentioned earlier, the proximity to some of the big places that you know you're gonna be spending a lot of time really makes up for it. Let's take a look at inside. All right, yeah? come on. Moving on to house number four in Timuning, behind the Guam Premier Outlet, is the Conga Sunset Court Condo Unit. It has exactly 800 square feet. Again, focusing on the comfy space that some people are starting to get turned on to. This unit is sold as is, and when you walk in, the sunlight comes straight through to the living area and the dining areas via these amazing, huge glass doors. In the living area, there's a built-in cabinetry which can be used for your entertainment center. Then, off to the left, you have a breakfast bar that looks into the kitchen area. The kitchen area has a great amount of space, including the pantry. Then, down the hall from that is the washer and the dryer hookup closet. And across from that, you have the bathroom, and at the end of that hall, a great linen closet. Yay for storage space! At the end of that hall, you have bedrooms one and two, each of which has its own split air conditioning unit. And if you thought that that last unit's monthly mortgage cost was a good one, listen up for this one. This unit is going for a great $73,000. And if you snag that with a 3.5 interest rate, for 30 years, your monthly mortgage can be as low as $328 per month not including the common area fees, which could mean a monthly payment of 433 bucks a month. Keep in mind how much people are paying rent for in Timuning while you're just gonna be forking over $430 a month. What a steal. And that does it for this tour. We hope that it sparked your interest into home ownership. If you'd like to see these properties yourself, give Robert Polino a call at 988-5224. Tune in next time for looking more properties that you can call your own. Until then, thank you so much for watching this episode of Welcome Home. We hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you're ready for next month. Get ready. New episode on the way here on this Sorensen Media Group television station. I'll see you next month with more properties for sale and more tips and tricks. I'm Kyle Mandapad.